as much as we hear about <clears throat> fragmentation, we also see convergence among or between traditional TV and connected television. And so how does this convergence affect media buying and selling? And what are some of the big opportunities that you're seeing? Yeah, I mean, I think the most important thing is that TV is not going away. Um, as much as we've seen shifts, we have it into streaming services. Um, TV, as, as however you define it, is, isn't going away. We actually did a, uh, a survey recently of about 700 uh, people on a panel. And it was, it was interesting to see what came back to us in how do you define TV? Is TV uh, the manufacturer of the actual hardware and the device? Is TV content? Is TV the programmer? Um, th there's a lot of different definitions out there. And I think what, what, what it boils down to is you know, viewers really just want to reach uh, the content that they want to uh, view whenever they want to view it. And I think that's just you know, indicative of our times of more on-demand sort of features. And, and therefore, we, you know, we, are, we are kind of centric on, on, on a couple things when it comes to convergent TV. And our approach is a little bit different than maybe a programmer who's looking to put digital first capabilities um, into their, their business models, where previously it was more linear focused. As a distributor, we we're looking to basically build products and services in which we attract both audiences. So we attract both the customer that wants more satellite or streaming services. We have an option for both. So as this convergence sort of happens, and programmers are looking to you know, determine where uh, they place original content and how to um, maintain a level of measurement or audience capability on that. Our responsibility as a distributor for those programmers is really to try to connect some dots and essentially not necessarily um, as much as uh, uh, a programmer has uh, obstacles in their way of connecting those dots. We sit in the middle of a lot of this uh, ecosystem in the sense of having data and viewership level insights that really could power a lot of the industry's capabilities to drive or pull together more of the fragmentation that's happening right now on, on multiple screens and measurement and such. That's really interesting. Uh, so finally, Matthew, I wanted to ask you to look ahead and just tell me what you see happening. Uh, some key areas of focus for direct TV, uh, what we could expect to see over the next 12 months, or is there anything on your wish list, perhaps? Sure. I think what we're focused on um, in the second half of this year and beyond is a continued approach in, in partnerships. So we want to make sure that when we are working with partnerships uh, and partners that we are uh, cross-pollinating both digital and linear sort of knowledge uh, of, of our business models. We operate a very complex business model as it pertains to being a service provider to programmers, as well as having an advertising business, um, as well as distributing um, our streaming services on other digital distribution platforms. So it, where we want to focus on is is how do we all come together in various different business models and enrich each other's business um, versus try and put each other out of business? Um, because as I mentioned, TV is not going anywhere and, and TV is a very uh, crucial part to, to how we all sort of grow from an ad tech lens uh, in this ecosystem. The second bet I think we're really focused on is the agencies and the, and the holding companies and the data, data assets that they've acquired over the past couple of years. There's a lot of uh, interesting opportunity there that we can empower and enrich, uh, which we are which are focused on um, helping kind of pull together some of the fragmentation that's occurring within within the measurement side of the house as well as the audience side of the house, which will essentially help both programmers as well as ourselves get closer to the areas that really matter to advertisers, which ideally would bring more advertising into the streaming space, as well as um, shifting from potentially areas that might not be um, uh, uh, might be underexposed or overexposed or duplicative in, in a lot of the buying process that's happening today. And lastly, we have a real sort of focus on programmatic or autom automation. And in, in that bucket, I would say that we're really focused on uh, a couple a couple things. 
Um, we know that there is some friction within the actual buying process um, that we need to sort of break down um, as operational sort of workflows become important or even more important within agencies over the next couple of years. And so we're looking to focus a lot of our attention there um, on more of our satellite business or linear business in which we can start to get into workflows that are faster and quicker to sort of make uh, uh, planning decisions, execute buys, and essentially sort of pull back um, any measurement that's needed. On the, on the DirecTV streaming side of the business with programmatic, there's a lot, there's a lot to do there in terms of um, how we start to enrich um, our data with, uh, with viewership level uh, buyers. So there's a lot of focus right now on you know, the data that we have as a platform, how we mine it, how we extract value out, it, out of it, how do we protect viewers, uh, viewership level data uh, within our uh, platforms, and how do we make, it, make these signals available to buyers um, in, in, a, in a programmatic way. And I think there's a lot, there's a lot there that I'm fairly excited about. There's a bunch of companies that are, are starting to take a, a little bit more, uh, uh, more, more of a set front and center approach there. And so we, we are leaned into that. And essentially, I think there's a lot more that will be coming on the contextual route as well as viewership level data.